Welcome back, everybody. This is Johnny Hopper, and uh, I've been getting a lot of slack as far as uh, hate comments, people telling me that I'm not actually a professional and I don't hold my pro license or any sort of designation. But in this video, I'm going to show you actually how to, I'm going to apply for my 2019 motocross license so that I can race a couple nationals uh, this summer. More than likely, I might just race the one here in Colorado at Thunder Valley, but um, we'll see, you know, because I'm semi-retired because of some of the major injuries that I had because I didn't race at all in uh, 2018 because uh, I had nine different fractures in my lower lower leg i broke my femur and my tib and fib and um, my kneecap and you know i had uh, in the span of two years i had five different surgeries on my leg to try to correct uh, what happened at a amsoil arena cross because of the multiple fractures on my tip and fib, I'm unable to lift my foot up. It's called foot drop. It tore my promonial nerve, and I can't lift my foot off the rear brake. So when I go to brake, I have to try to slide my foot off. And unfortunately, this injury is what forced me to basically retire because I'm unable to ride at the level I used to be uh, just because of what motorcycles has given me. Uh, they've... <laughs> I've, I've given my heart and soul and, and my body into this sport, and it, and it really irks me when people want to be keyboard warriors and say you're not a pro. Motorcycles have taken so much from me, as you can see in this. I've got uh, an axillary nerve damage in my shoulder, which I have no deltoid muscle whatsoever. Just another injury from racing motorcycles, and I'm extremely Pri prideful when it comes to being able to hold my pro license and in my videos I've never said I'm the best pro in the world learn cornering jumping technique I'm just saying that these are the techniques that I've learned over the years and years of racing against some of the best athletes in the world you name it I've been lapped by them and I, my goal was always to try to be the 1% of the 1%, and unfortunately I was only able to be that 1%, qualify for some main events, qualify for uh, some nationals, and but I wasn't ever able to get on a factory ride. Perhaps I'm taking this too far and too literally. Uh, I've just given 25 years of my life to hone a skill, and I do not want to see it being butchered on the internet, which is tough because it's going to happen, so let me just... Take the good in with the bad, and uh, let's follow the process of applying for my pro license. Here we go. We're at the AMA Pro Racing Members Network. Um, I'm going to go to licenses, and I'm going to apply for my 2019 license. And so you see it's 350 bucks. Shipping address, um, shipping license. I'm going to pick it up at the registry. So my most recent renewal was 2017 because they give you two years from when you hold the designation. 2017 was the last year I held my pro license um, because, again, I told you I was hurt all 2018, so I decided to keep the 350 bucks. So we're going to go boom. Here's all my information, my current AMA number, um, 28 years old, blah, blah, blah. Here's my information. Um, don't send me spam, please. Oh, shirt size. I am a medium. Pant size. I am 30. Jacket size. I am a large. Hat size. I am a small. Shoe size. I am a 10. My emergency contact. Employment. Insurance. Because they got to make sure that you have insurance. Racing history. Um, last year, held license. 2017. Uh, this year, information. This pro. Um, turn pro. Da, da, da. Oh, yeah. Personal, I actually gained a little bit of weight. Facebook, 
Twitter website, I guess. Um, might as well put my YouTube on there. All right, so team, uh, I ride for a local shop here, Rock Mountain Cycle Plaza, personal information. And then my last number was 875. Um, what's the three numbers that I'd like to have? Um, did you hold, so here's the rider eligibility. Um, did you hold a professional license in the 250, 450 class in 2016, 2017? I did. Did you hold a FMF, FIM? No, I did not. Uh, 18 months? Nope, because I haven't done any more pro ams. Did you finish? And open post boat 258 amateur national class in current previous year. No, I did not. I didn't raise a Loretta or anything. I accept. Probably going to have to take the con con concussion test again because they make you do that every, every year. So now I got to pay for it. So before I pay for it, I just, it's comments like this. I, Honestly, you know, I, I've, I've tried to learn because I've got a couple YouTube channels, one on finance and obviously, you know, my fun one with, with motocross. Um, and it's just comments like this saying, don't designate yourself as a pro. And then people saying that, uh, you know, they'd probably beat me by five seconds a lap or, or whatever. I, I shouldn't let it bother me so much, but I've gotten a couple of them and, you know, it's like, don't be a, a keyboard warrior out there. <laughs> it just, it does bug me, you know. I, I'm trying to give good information to people as far as how to train properly. Over the years that I've learned, by no means do I think that I am, you know, a top 20 AMA National Pro anymore. Um, you know, the best I've ever done was finish top 30 at a couple outdoor nationals, you know, but I've spent my entire life... Uh, 25 years in this craft to try to become a pro rider and when I did that that was a big accomplishment for me and I've been a local pro rider won local championships and yada 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 I finished 18th at Loretta Lynn in the um, in the pro class and uh, just for somebody just to say that you're not a pro and I've had a couple people that was just the prime example uh, it, it does bug me, and um, I'm giving out free information to try to help people over the years of what I learned, which I wish people would have given me that information when I was younger. It would have helped me immensely, and now that I'm on my way out, and I've basically told myself that I am not going to try to make this my number one job anymore uh, just because of the level of danger, and I'm trying to help kids that want to make it their job, just... Maybe keep it with some positive comments. You know, I, I, I'm probably here going forward just going to delete all the negativity on my channel. But thank you guys. And let me just continue with purchasing this pro license. Do, do, do. So I've always thought that these things are expensive, especially for the average privateer where you go, you qualify, you make 500 bucks. It's not as advantageous as a lot of people think when it comes to racing professional. Waiting for my receipt. Transaction has been approved. Now my next step. All right, so there's a couple different steps for flat track and you know here i'm going for attention motocross and atv riders not the pro hill climb or whatever so check your email um application and documents you got notarize and then blah 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 so let me check my email so i've got a couple emails uh ama pro support action needed so I got to fill out my application, provide physical mailing address, email address, copy of current medical insurance. Um, if For 2018, I'm going to need my passport photo. So if you're on TV, they can overlay the, the video with a nice photo of you, uh, read, sign, participation, and then proof of impact concussion management test. These tests 
Hopefully I can film a little bit of it right here, but they are rather annoying, but would be very difficult if you just received a concussion because you cannot focus when you take those. Hopefully I don't have to go to a hospital or a, an official testing center. Hopefully I can just do it on my computer. Usually, at least past in years past, I've been able to do that. And then uh, direct deposit, um, and then you know you fill out a W-9, so... When they do pay you, they can tax, deduct it, and then you pay taxes on that amount. So then Sharon, what does Sharon say? Hey, Johnny, I've received. Please print out the attachment, uh, notarize, and then page do do do, and then and then. And then um. So the Alpine Star Mobile Medical Unit. I've got some rider information here. Concussion testing. Login. So I'm guessing for the baseline, I'm going to need this information. I'm going to need to download the software. So the program has to use a webcam, and I can't have my screen recording program on at the same time to give you guys a little bit of what the actual test is is like so i'm going to use a little tripod and uh, this is what we're going to do with with a laptop so darn. so they just need to verify your identity during the process so that they know you're actually taking the concussion baseline test so this is a baseline meaning when you're not concussed it's going to give you some accurate information on how you respond to certain problems that require your attention and a fair amount of focus. So if you do become concussed, uh, get knocked out, you got to go to the medical unit and then you have to take this test again to make sure that your scores are pretty close to the baseline because if they're far off, uh, you probably do have a concussion and they won't let you race. So I'll give you a little bit of information on how this test works so you can just see that it's it's pretty easy, but it would be very hard to take this test <laughs> if you had a bad headache. This one I always struggled with. Uh, I hated this part of the test. For some reason, I am not very good at looking at these pictures when it comes to the squiggly lines. I think I got the majority of these <laughs> wrong, unfortunately. So I won't take you through the whole test. It's about 45 minutes to complete, but hopefully this just gives you a little bit overview of what pros have to go through, in, at least in motocross and supercross. I do know they do this for football testing and some, some other professional sports as well, and I do think this is a good baseline, hence baseline impact test, to have for athletes just so that we're not putting ourselves at risk when it comes to head injuries. So that is it guys, that's how you obtain your pro license once you meet the eligibility requirements as far as making it to Loretta in the pro class, uh, having an FIM license or an actual Supercross motocross license two years prior to the year that you're wanting to compete. I gave you a little bit of information on the impact concussion test and then just what pros have to go through to actually get their physical card before they can actually race an event. I know I might do a couple this year, and last thing I just wanted to say, I probably took it a little bit too far when it comes to comments on the internet. It just, 
that is a soft topic uh, for me. I, I've given my life to this sport and I tried, things were going well for me and I just had some bad injuries that unfortunately took me out of the game. And I know a lot of pros out there that have had big success, uh, but we're just, you gotta have some good luck too when it comes to this. And um, my whole goal with my channel, that's why I started it was I can't, race at the level that I want to anymore so whatever I can do to try to help little kids become faster than me help individuals guys that uh, couldn't beat me before try to build them up so that they can beat me and make a living at this sport and try to make it farther than I did that's that's my goal for this channel giving out some free information so I hope you guys subscribe I hope you guys like this stuff and I know this was a little bit more of a dark video but forgive me